how do I know which finish is the best for the project that I'm working on? And what's the big deal about finishes anyway? Do I really need them? Well, burns tend to fade. They fade more with time, use, and sunlight. And the finish you use also depends on what type of project you use, whether it's outside or whether you're gonna wear it or whether it needs to be food safe. So how do you make it last longer? Hey, Pyro, I'm going to answer all of those questions about what finishes you should use for what project. Now, this is not the be all end all list. So if you happen to know of another finish that you particularly love to use, I would love to hear about that in the comments. In the meantime, I am going to share with you some of the best finishes that you can use for your pyrography project, as well as my top favorites and the ones that I use all the time. I'm Jani Lizenby, your pyro professor. This is Burn Savvy. Let's burn. Now, before we get into the actual list, there are some really important things that you need to keep in mind when you are choosing a finish for your project. I've got a list here that I want to, I want to make sure I share with you. So first of all, no finish is made equal, right? You want something that's going to protect the wood from fingerprints, especially if you're going to be selling these at a local market. People have a tendency to pick things up and the more they touch things, the more likely they are to buy. However, if your wood doesn't have any finishes, it's going to be keeping all of those oils, right? Personally, I like the more natural look of the matte finish, but the glossy finish is going to give you more protection and more durability over time. So the more glossy it is, the more protected it is. I personally like to use a satin or a semi-gloss because I don't like it to be that shiny. You also want some that are UV resistant, if you can help it. Not all finishes have to be that way, but I definitely prefer that because sunlight tends to wear out those burns. It is not vital at the same time that UV protection is definitely going to make your work last longer. A lot of times people will put work on the wall next to say a window or a door that has a window. So you want to be able to protect it from sunlight. It's really good if you can get a UV resistant finish, but sometimes that's hard to find. What I do is I give my customers a little card with the artwork that gives them a little care instructions that lets them know to keep it out of sunlight and away from windows and things like that. Spray versus brush on. Spray on can get into all of those nooks and crannies, but generally spray does not last as long as a brush on finish. If you are concerned, I highly recommend that you do a spray on first and then brush it on afterward. If you have bark, I highly recommend that you tap it on instead of brush it on. So I'll do one swipe to get it on there and then I will tap it into all the little crevices and it also pops the bubbles that show up when you are sealing over bark. So if that's a concern and you don't want to do all that extra work, use a spray. Natural versus unnatural finishes. Natural finishes typically don't last as long as an unnatural finish that might dry as a plastic, like one of the polycrylics or the urethanes and things like that. But the natural finishes are more food safe and they do give a more matte finish. So that's totally up to you whether you need something more natural or something more durable. All finishes darken wood. Okay, and it doesn't matter what kind of finish you get. Every finish will darken the wood. Imagine what the wood looks like wet. In general, that's what it looks like. Now, the natural finishes tend to have a little bit of a lighter finish, and so it may not darken the wood forever, but these other finishes that are unnatural finishes, they will darken the wood and it will stay dark. It will look wet. So whatever the wood looks like wet, that's the color that it's going to look when it is dry. This next one is also very important. If you are doing shading on any kind of wood, understand that darkening the wood with a sealant is going to hide some of your shading. So if you are adding sealant to dark wood that you have shaded, if it is very light, it's going to disappear. Dark wood hides your shading anyway. A sealant also hides your shading. You put a sealant on a dark wood, it's going to lose some shading. So make sure that you have enough contrast in what you have burned so that you do not lose all of that hard work when you add your finish. All right, let's get into our finishes. I'm going to give you a list of some of the favorites in the wood burning community. All of my favorite finishes are going to have links down in the descriptions to where you can get them. And in some cases, depending on where you get it, I can get you a discount code. So make sure that you're checking the links and see if you can get a discount on your finishes. 
polyurethane. Now polyurethane you can get in a liquid form, you can get in a spray paint form. Polyurethane does yellow over time, but it does make a really nice hard surface. It kind of turns into a plastic, but there's typically not a lot of UV protection with a polyurethane, but it is a very popular option. Another popular one is polycrylic. Now this is actually one of my favorites. I love that it does not yellow my work. It just makes the wood look wet. It dries crystal clear, but it's not UV resistant. It is though really good for projects that are going to see a lot of use, like furniture pieces, tabletops, those kinds of things. I use it for the wall art for sure. You can get this in a range from matte to glossy finish. Another popular one is resin or epoxy. This is really popular. It's kind of blowing up right now. And this can give you a really thick protection and a really glassy finish. So it doesn't show as much texture as say a polyurethane, a polycrylic or a spar urethane. Instead, it would smooth it over and kind of have a very clear glassy finish. So if you love that glassy look, resin is a really good option. Some of them do come with UV protection, but again, this is also one of those things that sometimes yellows over time. Clear spray paint. This one is a really easy one to just spray three layers and you're done. It's super fast, super easy to apply. It generally doesn't yellow over time, which is really nice. I like that, but it also doesn't have any UV protection. It is less protective than other finishes because it's easier to crack through. So a polyurethane, a poly acrylic, or a spar urethane is going to be stronger than a spray paint. And resin is going to be stronger than a polyurethane, polycrylic, and poly whatever else it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be strongest. The spray paint is probably going to be one of the weaker protections for your work. It does come in a range from matte to glossy finish. However, you gotta be really careful with matte finish spray paint because sometimes it dries cloudy, especially if you use a burn with paints like watercolor. For sure, it clouds over watercolor. So I just steer clear of the matte finish. Even though I love a matte finish, I typically stick with satin, semi-gloss, or gloss when it comes to this finish. Furniture wax. Now furniture wax dries on in a matte finish. It really does add a nice touchable surface that you can use. However, it does need to be reapplied every so often and it a lot of times doesn't offer the UV protection. Another popular general finish is a lacquer or a varnish. Those work really, really well. Most of them are not UV resistant and most of them do yellow over time, but they are a high quality finish that definitely lasts a long time. Danish oil, it doesn't have UV protection. It does yellow over time, but it's one of those that's a little bit more like a natural finish in the sense that it does give a matte finish that it will lighten over time and you might have to reapply it. Let's move on to outdoor finishes. Now, outdoor finishes need to be able to hold up to the weather and hold up to the sun, okay? Now, no burn is ever a match for the sun. I have had some burns outside and I've just, I've actually been testing this out for years and I have some that faded within a year and some that it's been seven years and over the last two, it started to show signs of fading, but it hasn't faded yet. So you really can put up a good fight against the sun, but there's no match for it. And if you use the wrong kind of sealant, it can crack. So you definitely wanna make sure that you are using an outdoor sealant. Here are some of my favorites. Deck sealer. This is one that I have used a number of times and I'm really happy with it. It's worked out pretty well. It's UV resistant. It is water resistant. That is if you seal the whole thing, you have to seal front and back and sides, especially if you have bark, you need to seal the entire thing. It does come in matte and glossy finishes. It's really good about penetrating into the wood. So it takes a little bit more time to apply this, but this I have found to be my favorite way of sealing things that are for outdoor use. These do tend to yellow over time. Another one is a marine finish or finishes that you use for boats. These are really, really good at holding up against the weather and against the UV resistance. These are also high quality. They are far more expensive though, just like the deck sealant, they're gonna be more expensive. It does also yellow over time, but in general, this shouldn't crack. And again, this is very much water resistant if you seal the whole thing. 
Another good one is spar urethane. Spar urethane is really good for indoor and outdoor uses. It is really good about giving UV protection and it can be water resistant if you seal the whole thing. This one does yellow over time and I have found that it's not as resilient as say the marine finish or the deck sealant, but it is still a really good option and it's less expensive. If you've learned something from this video so far, it'd be awesome if you give it a thumbs up and let YouTube know that I'm doing an okay job. I really appreciate it. Let's move on to food safe finishes. These are ones that you are going to use for your cutting boards, for your charcuterie boards, for your wooden spoons. That was my big seller when I was doing Etsy and when I was doing craft shows and locally, that is a big seller. You definitely wanna make sure that you have a really good food safe finish for your kitchen products. I will coat it with an oil first and then finish with a conditioner. The reason for that is that the oil penetrates the wood and helps to really moisturize it and keep it from cracking over time and with use and with washing. Then I like to add the conditioner and the conditioner generally puts kind of a shell around the wood and that helps to prevent the water from coming in in the first place. You don't have to do that. If you just wanna skip it, you can just do the oil or you can just do the conditioner but I find that they last so much longer when you do it the right way and you just oil it first and then you add conditioner. So here are some of my favorite products that I use for food safe finishes. Butcher block oil. The one thing about this is it is petroleum based. So if you have people who are more concerned about natural uh, sources or natural finishes in their kitchen, then this might be a little bit of a questionable item to use depending on who you talk to and i'm just talking about things that you can just buy on amazon like howards or walrus or things like that they generally use a petroleum based oil and a petroleum based conditioner but they are fairly inexpensive they're really easy to find i'll put links for you in the description to make it really easy mineral oil now you want to make sure that you are using a food grade mineral oil okay you can actually find it in the medicine section in the laxatives, <laughs> but it works really well for finishing wood. And this is actually something that I use a lot because mineral oil is food safe and you can use that to penetrate the wood before you add any sealants or conditioners. It's also a lot cheaper than most of the butcher block oils out there and most of the other oils out there, but it is petroleum based. Now, if you are looking for something a little bit more natural, I would recommend walnut oil, okay? Not vegetable oil, not peanut oil, not all these other oils, walnut oil and the reason i say that is because it does not go rancid like the other oils do what happens is it penetrates and as it dries it kind of creates this hardened shell so it doesn't go bad the only issue there is that it's a little more expensive right and you have people with allergies but if you have people who aren't concerned about that but they want something a little more natural walnut oil is an excellent option i've used it before and it's fantastic the next one, which is a far more expensive, but a very quality finish is tongue oil. Have you ever used it? This one is plant-based. So again, it's a nat natural option. It does dry very slowly, but once it dries, it is very strong. So it is very durable as far as finishes go, as far as food safe oils go. Some people are very allergic, so just be careful of that. And secondly, it must be 100% pure, no solvents in order for it to be food safe. So double check that the tongue oil is actually safe to use. After you have added your oils, you definitely want to add that conditioner over the top. Some of my favorites are of course, butcher block conditioner. That's a natural pairing of the butcher block oil and the butcher conditioner right uh, but I also love to use my own personal recipe of beeswax and oil this is a beautiful mix my customers absolutely adore that now I do use a mineral oil and a beeswax but you are welcome to use a different kind of oil again one of these other oils that are used to penetrate the wood is a really good idea I highly recommend that but I love the beeswax conditioner you can also use a carnauba wax instead of a beeswax, and that way it's a little more plant-based, and a lot of customers really love that too. Odie's oil is another really good option. It is natural and it does dry solid, just like tongue oil. It's really, really awesome. And you can get this in a light color, a universal finish. You can also get it in a dark finish. Either way, it's a really good option.
Let's get into mixed media finishes now. Not all finishes play nicely with mixed media. So one of my favorite ways to add color to wood is watercolor. I absolutely adore watercolor with my wood burnings. However, as we've already discussed, certain spray paints do not work well. And it's not just spray paint, it's spray varnish, it's spray polyurethane, all of those things can cloud if you get a matte finish. So please do not get a matte finish spray anything for your watercolor, okay? It definitely needs to be a satin at minimum or a semi-gloss or a gloss, okay? And varnish is definitely a really good option. I personally love to use a spray polycrylic. Now, once you have put down one or two coats of the spray, then you can add a brush on finish, no problem. But you definitely want to add a spray finish first to make sure that it doesn't smear any of your colors. And if you have any light colors, you definitely don't want anything that's going to yellow like a spar urethane or a polyurethane. That it, it just changes the color. And so I prefer to use a polycrylic or something that says it dries crystal clear. Acrylic paint is pretty easy going. Pretty much any finish goes really well over acrylic paint. It's not a problem. I still prefer anything that dries clear because if I do use a white or something like that, it does yellow over the top of the white paint. So I like it when it dries crystal clear. Gouache, on the other hand, is not so friendly with other mediums. In fact, I highly recommend that you don't add a finish because it's one of those mediums that can be worked again and you can get it wet and keep working it. It can be really tricky. So I don't like to add a finish over my gouache. Instead, I highly recommend that you put glass over it to protect it. If you don't want that, that's fine, but you are risking the surface of the piece, okay? So just keep that in mind. Gouache doesn't play nicely with pretty much anything. Colored pencils are kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes the wax-based colored pencils and sometimes the oil-based colored pencils will melt under certain finishes. So you just gotta be careful with some of that colored pencil. In my experience, I find that it's best to just add a spray finish on and then to paint over it afterwards. Personally, I prefer an archival fixative over the top and then you can add another sealant or you add a varnish. A varnish is really good for archival quality. So what I like to do is spray on a few layers of that finish. And then once you can touch it and the wax doesn't come down or the oil doesn't smear all over the place, then you can add a brush on over the top. Now, what if you're like me and you like to burn things besides wood? What finishes do you use then? I'm gonna give you a quick and dirty list real fast of some of my favorite finishes, okay? I'm going to read it to you. First of all is leather. You can use a leather conditioner or actually you can use a lot of the food safe uh, conditioners. A lot of the food safe conditioners have an oil and a wax in them and they work really, really well. The next one is paper. With paper, I like to use a spray archival fixative or I like to use a clear spray paint. The problem with the clear spray paint is that it can crackle if the paper bends. So that's where you would use the fixative instead. The next one is gourds. Gourds like to use a wax like a carnauba or a paraffin or a beeswax. Um, again, the food safe finishes are also really good for this because you can get the oil and wax mixed together and they make a beautiful finish for gourds. The next one is bone. My favorite one for this is a spray polycrylic because it does not yellow over time. And spraying helps to get into all of those little nooks and crannies. Like when I'm when I'm burning skulls or, or different things like that, it gets into the teeth, it gets into the, the antlers, it gets into all of the places. So a spray is really important and something that dries clear. My personal favorite, polycrylic. And the next one would be cotton fabric. So if I'm doing a tote or something like that, I like to use a textile medium for that. And you just paint that over the top and that helps to protect it in the wash. You do not have to do that, but it will last longer if you use the textile medium. Remember, if there are other finishes that you have heard of that work really well or finishes that you've used that you really enjoy, 
put those down in the comments. Share and share alike. That's one of the best things about being a part of the wood burning and pyrography community. Everyone is so willing to share. And if you are ready to join a pyrography community, the Burn Savvy channel membership is open and I am now moving my courses into the Burn Savvy channel membership. So make sure that you go check it out. You're gonna to wanna to watch this video to see what level suits you best. If you would like to know what I wish I knew before I started wood burning, you're gonna to wanna to watch this beautiful video right here. I'm Jenny Lizenby, your pyro professor, and I'll see you in the next video. Later, pyro.